Hello everyone, my name is Erin Elizabeth Weinberg. Thank you so much for choosing to be here with me today, whether it's your first time joining my channel, I've come back many times, I really appreciate it. Today I want to talk about if you have a case of the when I haves, or am I waiting to be happy um, until I have this perfect utopian, possibly unrealistic circumstances going on in my life, okay? So I have been, and sometimes still am, very guilty of this, Basically what happens, the when I have basically means when I have my perfect partner or when I have my dream job or when I have the right car or when I live in a better apartment, then my life will really start. Then I can feel really happy. Then I can finally bask in the greatness of everything because up until then that was all just practice and bullshit until I got this thing that I finally wanted. <laughs> okay, so the when I have is just when I have blank, then I'll feel blank. Okay. So just basically postponing our happiness, tying our happiness, our joy, our inner peace um, into something outside of us and attaching our worth and value there. So why is this problematic? Okay. It's problematic because life will always change and flow, ebb and flow. We're always going to have things we want, be working towards something we don't want. Um, and so what can happen, it's good definitely to have things we want and goals we're working towards, but if we put all of our worth and value and happiness into that thing, then sometimes we can get tricked into not enjoying in the present moment and being where we are now. So we, if we learn to attach our happiness and our worth and our value and our accomplishments and our meaning or anything like that to something outside of us, that the moment that gets taken away for whatever reason, or we have a life change circumstance or something happens, or it takes a little bit longer than we thought, then we can feel totally soul crushed and upset because we've put so much of our own time, energy, and well-being into that particular thing that we can get to the point where maybe we don't even feel like we have worth or status or peace, love, joy, anything like that, unless we have that particular thing. So it harms us because it makes us feel like there's something wrong with me if I don't have that thing yet. Now, for everyone whose egos might be going off and saying, does this mean I can't want anything or I shouldn't have goals or I don't want to change my circumstances? Obviously, of course, I'm not saying that. Um, just because we're deciding to choose to be happy and present in this moment and being grateful for what we do have right now and how things are right now doesn't mean that we're not going to want to grow. We're not going to push ourselves to be better. We're not going to want new different things depending on what circumstance we're at in our life. So this does not mean that we suddenly abandon all of our hopes, dreams, desires, anything we want for ourselves. What it does mean is that while I'm working towards X, I still give myself permission to enjoy my life as it is right now. Because nothing outside of us, we chase things outside of us in hopes that it can create this feeling of love, fullness, accomplishment inside of us. But the truth is, if we don't cultivate that feeling within ourselves yet, no amount of external anything can replace that void or that emptiness of that lack of feeling inside of us. So the point of the when I haves is to notice when am I saying I can't access my feeling of peace, love, contentment, whatever feeling that you're attaching to something outside of you. When can't I access that? And what am I blaming not having X, Y, or Z thing on not having? So for example, a lot of people might say, you know, I can't feel full in love in my life unless I have a partner. That's not true. Like, obviously, a partner is a great addition to our life. It's something that is really amazing and adds to our lives. We can build with the right person. We can grow in that way. But if you're looking for a partner just to fill that void for you, you're always going to end up resenting them. They're not, they can't give you anything to overcome that void that's in yourself. Same thing with like, well, I'll be happy once I get out of this shitty job and I get to the next level of where I want to be with my job. Again, not true because that resentment, that anger you feel about that job, that's going to go with you everywhere. The inner work, the inner world you've created is always reflected outward and is always showing up wherever you are. Now, again, obviously, there is a fine line between holding a balance with something and being patient as you're working towards something and working and cultivating that feeling in like a more neutral environment. I'm not saying that you shouldn't have boundaries, that you shouldn't stand up for yourself, that if someone or something is very toxic, 
or um, damaging to you or doesn't serve you. I'm not saying to sit there and, you know, put up with it and just be like, I can find peace in this very horrible, abusive situation. Obviously not saying that. Obviously, if it doesn't serve you, then you need to make some changes and go forward with that. But what I am saying is even if you're not at best, your best ideal situation or how you want your life to be doesn't mean that you cannot access feelings of peace, joy, and happiness right now. And the longer, you know, we keep wishing away our life until we get to that final thing that we think we're working towards, eventually we're going to realize we wished away our whole life. And so if we can't find moments of happiness, accomplishment, satisfaction, contentment, whatever you're attaching to this outside status symbol, then we're never going to be able to show up for ourselves in a way that's actually cultivating those feelings and working on cultivating that feeling within ourselves without those external things. So finding all those feelings is part of the process. We want to learn how to be emotionally stable enough within ourselves that I know, okay, you know, I might not have my dream car right now or my dream career or live in the ideal location I want to live in, but I know I can find moments of joy, even if it's not all the time, just moments of joy or peace, or again, you pick the feeling that you're trying to access. I know I can find that in my day-to-day -day life. And the way I'm going to do that is X, Y, and Z. Even if it's just for five minutes sitting out in nature, just being at peace and feeling contentment, right? Even if it's, you know, if you're looking for a romantic partner, even if it is just, I can feel all the love my friends have for me and I'm going to cherish that energy I have right now too. Um, so finding those feelings and being able to access them as part of your process is just going to give you so much more because you are going to feel the double benefit of I've already cultivated that feeling within myself. And then now this thing that I want is going to just add to that feeling too. And again, remembering all things come and go. So it could be that, you know, I waited so long for this job and I finally got it and it's so amazing. But then in a few years, you outgrow it and you're ready for the next job. If you put so much attachment and worth onto that job and you decide, oh, I'm only successful because I, I got this particular job, we're not going to be open to the infinite universal wisdom that exists that shows us, okay, that was a great match for you now, but now you need to move into this other space because you're growing and evolving. And if I can't attach to that understanding and that acceptance that sometimes I might be too stuck in something that's no longer serving me because I place so much of my worth and value in that particular thing outside of me instead of understanding, okay, it's time for me to let go. It's time for me to move on. It's time for me to move towards the next location I live in, um, you know, the next project I work on, the next mind space I adapt, right? If we are so focused on attaching our feelings and worth and value and whatever, onto something outside of us, then we can be so hesitant to choose something that might not look like what we thought we were so focused on because we think, oh no, my happiness can only come from that particular car right there. Instead of saying like, that one served me, it was great, but turns out this one is an even better match for me. And so I'm going to focus on that one and use the energy I've used around cultivating that feeling onto this other thing now. And so the when I haves, again, you need to be careful of, of course, you should have goals. Of course, you should have boundaries. Of course, you should have expectations. Of course, you need to be able to stand up for yourself and empower yourself, but you need to be clear about that fine line of, do I just want this thing? Because I think it can activate a feeling within me without, if I, if unless I have it, or do I want this thing? Because it's an extension of the love, success, accomplishment that I've already cultivated within myself. And then this is just my external reality affirming my internal reality. So at the end of the day, the one I have are just there to make you feel stuck, make you feel like you're not good enough, make you feel like what you're doing isn't actually helpful or serving you. Um, and so just getting very clear, you know, am I waiting to be happy or waiting to feel fulfilled or waiting to feel love and joy and appreciate all the abundance I have in my life right now until I have this thing. And one very easy thing you can do every day um, is just make a gratitude list. So let's say you're working for a dream job or you want to move an apartment or you want to, you know, do whatever. You can make a list of all the things like I am grateful for this apartment or this home because even though it's not my ideal, and we're not saying that, you know, being grateful for it doesn't mean that you're going to be stuck in that, but I'm grateful for, you know, my, this apartment because this, this, and this. I'm grateful for my friendships that are showing me what versions of love can be like because of this, this, and this. I'm grateful for this job because of this, this, and this. So just being grateful and acknowledging um, 
gratitude for what you have in your life right now will definitely not block you and definitely will not keep you stuck. So sometimes we think, okay, well, if I'm grateful for this right now and in this moment, then there's no way I'm going to be able to be open to receive something better. But the truth is when we exist in a place of vibration, we feel a place of gratitude. We exist in a vibration that is really helpful and very kind and very peaceful. And so we are able to be open to new opportunities instead of looking at this like really desperate, oh my God, I need that thing to fill me up. I need that. I need that because I'm never going to get it. So it's just about calming our own energy and noticing that we can find joy, happiness, peace, love in this current moment, even if it's not our totally ideal circumstances, because we are working towards that. And no amount of anything external can fill up any emptiness internal we have. So just try and get clear. Think about where, where am I placing my when I haves? You know, where am I placing when all this will suddenly make sense for me? And, you know, if it feels like a big overnight, my life will just suddenly get better immediately. That's probably a case of the when I have. Okay. So I hope this video served you. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you ever want any information about me, how to work with me, um, purchase my books, or if you want to donate for energetic exchange, all that information is linked below in the description box. Thank you so much for being here. And I hope you have a wonderful day and think about your when I have moments. Okay, bye.